All right, we are live. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, community members of UICA. Alhamdulillah, it's good to be with you this evening. It is amazing to think that two weeks from today will be the Eid. Uh, it is going by, Ramadan is going by so very, very quickly. Um, and I, I just think back of uh, last night when Sheikh Ninawi was speaking and we have opportunities every day. Uh, and so I offer this to you this evening, every night at nine o'clock, please, we ask that you join us uh, and receive a little gem of knowledge, wisdom, uh, blessings in Ramadan, every night at nine o'clock, inshallah. This evening, we have a, a special guest, Dr. Mohammed Salhab. Uh, he is from Jordan. He had moved to Arizona about a year ago. He was living, uh, I think it was last summer, he was living in Indiana prior to moving to Arizona. Uh, so I believe this is his first Ramadan with us, alhamdulillah. He is a board certified internist, hematologist and medical oncologist. Uh, so he is going to pre present to us this evening, uh, benefits of fasting. And I will ask you if you think of questions during his presentation, please write them down, or actually, I'm sorry, you can message them in via Facebook Live, via Zoom, and we can answer those after. Uh, Dr. Salhab, thank you for coming this evening. I will turn it over to you. Sure, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother Hamza and uh, Sheikh Didmar and Brother Muhammad, thank you for uh, this opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, I would like to divide my uh, talk to you today into two parts. One is about health, uh, health benefits of fasting. And probably most of you will know these things, but I will talk about them in more scientific way. And also I leave probably five minutes to talk about the coronavirus. So um, from my career, I am a blood doctor as well as a cancer doctor. I treat all cancers and I ask Allah to prevent those diseases from you and your families and beloved ones. Uh, for, for any medicine that, or chemotherapy or a medication for cancer that I give for my patients, we really depends on what we call clinical trials. So we have to really have a trial saying that this medication was tested for this amount of time or multiple patients to really make sure is this is an effective thing or it's not an effective thing. And same, same for anything in, in, in medicine. And this is just a trial I wanted to share with you. This is, was, was just published, uh, uh, I think earlier this year. And it's nice, it comes from Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas in the United States. And this is actually a first trial, first a human trial, really to test, to talk about intermittent fasting. This is our fasting from dawn to sunset for 30 days, as we do. This is all about Ramadan here. And we wanted to make sure, is it really uh, has health benefits or not? And is this really tested or proved by science? And I'm sure, as I said, most of this probably you guys know, but I think now we have it uh, proved by a clinical trial, which is very important uh, in medicine. So when they did this, they actually had around 14 people, 13 males and one female. So a total of 14 people, they were around like 30 years old, uh, plus minus. They all fasted around 14 hours a day. This is the same fast we do. And if you look here, they really done this fasting between May uh, uh, 2018 uh, until June 14, 2018. So usually to really validate a clinical trial or like a concept in medicine, you need a long time. And we're talking about here two years. Sometimes for a medicine to get approved needs five to six years. So they make sure that the minimum duration of daily fasting was around 14 hours, 23 minutes. And that the kind of the, that was the shortest. And the longest day was 14 hours, 48 minutes. And they all did very well. They did not eat or drink as we do exactly in our fasting and they did not have any complications. They did blood tests. So this is how you wanna make sure are we really doing good by fasting or not? So they did check their blood before fasting, after they finished the fast at the 30 days or the 28 days, as well as they did some blood tests roughly a week after, after Ramadan, you know, in, in the Eid time. So, 
to summarize what is, there is a lot in details in this trial, but I wanted to really show you how, uh, what are the benefits. So this is the first human study, honestly, that tests the proteins. And it's actually the first human study that for 30 days, consecutive 30 days from dawn to sunset. There is a lot of talk about intermittent fasting, you know, for uh, weight loss, for uh, medical issues, but this is the fast that we do. So the results showed there is anti-cancer serum protein signatures, meaning that the fasting could, uh, 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 has an anti-cancer uh, benefits. It can upregulate the proteins for glucose and lipid metabolism and insulin signaling. What that means is when, when we fast, the proteins that regulate or organize the blood sugar in our body get, get more organized and that prevent diabetes and high blood sugar. It also help to metabolize, or meaning removing the bad lipids, the bad, we, we say hyperlipidemia or bad lipids or metabolism that also improves from fasting. For people who has non-insulin dependent diabetes who are you know, uh, mostly obese, this has improved the insulin actually in their bodies. And they sometimes will not require medicine if they really fast during this time. It actually regenerate our immune system as well as cognitive function, meaning our brain cells. So what happens is uh, immune system and also our brain functionality depends mainly on the glucose. And when we have less amount of glucose during the fasting, that subhanAllah yeah, lead to our brain cells, immune system to regenerate. So you're kind of refreshing your cells with a brand new cells to really help you fight infections and also give you a better brain and help you with memory. And again, it protect against cancer. So how they detest that. So during the blood work that they did before the fasting, after the 30 days, as well as the week after, they tested some of the proteins uh, that works or stops the bad cells or the cancer cells. So in my field, I always tell my patients, cancer is exactly your normal cells that they grow crazy. Those cells are growing crazy and they deceive the body, letting the body know that we are normal, please do not attack us. And they actually turn off the immune system. So what, what happened, this is when the immune system turns off, we have the cancer cells start to grow and this is how patients get cancer. So SubhanAllah, the fasting, those proteins that actually the, uh, uh, stopped during the cancer growth, actually they will not stop meaning that the body immune system will stay activated and actually will prevent some of the cancers. And that actually was tested for some proteins for some uh, 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 lung cancers, skin cancers, as well as uh, reproductive tract for women cancers. When we talk about metabolic syndrome, this is what we call obesity, blood sugar, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, as well as high lipids. So, with the intermittent fasting, meaning with fasting Ramadan, it's proven that it can help the blood pressure, the non insulin dependent diabetic patients, as well as um, some people lose weight. And which is nice I actually find about this study, especially with this time, it also decreases the inflammation, inflammations, infections. So if, if a person is sick, actually again, the immune system will regenerate because of the intermittent fasting. So you'll have more fresh, more potent, more strong immune cells that really could fight infections, could fight bad cells in the body. And this is SubhanAllah comes from fasting. One of the important things is Alzheimer's disease. So that also proactive, preventive by fasting. So Alzheimer is the memory disease that most likely happen in elderly patients. So fasting people who fast, hopefully the chances of them getting Alzheimer's disease is less. And the other thing, what we call neuropsychiatric disorders, again, brain diseases, as well as mood diseases. And SubhanAllah, I'm coming from an Islamic country. And in general, the rate of mood diseases and brain diseases are less compared to other countries. I'm hoping this is the reason. I mean, sometimes it's underreported because of cultural issues, but I think honestly, uh, this is the reason behind it, why we, less, less, we have less Alzheimer's disease in general, as well as uh, less mood problems. And SubhanAllah, it's all connected to uh, uh, fasting, to reading Quran and other things here. 
I wanted to stress on two things in this study, so we do not have like bias, what we say, oh, people actually did not eat too much or they were on calorie, calorie restrictions, that's why they got the benefits. So they made sure those 14 people, they have no calorie restrictions and none of them really significantly has any weight loss. So you should not lose weight really to get the benefits of, of what we talked about. You should not like you, we all try to watch what we eat, but in Ramadan, sometimes on iftar you eat uh, uh, without watching till you fall and you stop. So they made sure those, those uh, people in the study, they did not even watch what they eat, which is a good thing telling you that, you know, normal person fasting from dawn to sunset, 30 days, these are the benefits. I'm sure we, we know about these benefits from before, uh, but this is the, honestly, the, a trial that it should, uh, proteins in the blood that has benefits, and this is kind of a proven. Subhanallah, Rasul Sallallahu said this more than 1400 years ago, Sumu Tasihu. And uh, this is how if you fast, you get your body gets stronger and you can get benefit from fasting. And I'm not saying that people who are sick should fast, but this is kind of the benefits of in general. And probably I would ask uh, Sheikh Didmar to say, in Tasumu Khairun Lakum. It has some benefits for sure, uh, good deeds in, in Al-Akhirah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hide this benefit on, from us. And hopefully there is some physical benefits to the body uh, connected to that, uh, uh, not only just uh, deeds in, in, in Al-Akhirah, but I'll leave it to Dr. Uh, to uh, Mufti Didmar for that. So um, I do not say that patients who has cancer should, should fast. Patients who have cancer, they are sick patients, they get chemotherapy, they should not fast. But this is subhanAllah how fasting from, from childhood and hopefully from adulthood, this is all can decrease our chances to uh, get uh, 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 health issues. And this is was proven. So I hope this was helpful just to confirm what we know in a more of a scientific way. So decreases the chances of cancer, decreases blood pressure, decreases the glucose or diabetes problems, decrease inflammations. I hope we are fasting so the coronavirus will stay away and uh, decrease the, uh, 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 the mental health issues, the uh, Alzheimer's disease, the memory problems. And it's all from that concept that you regenerate your immune system, your cells to be healthier and younger. And uh, SubhanAllah, this is, as I said, was proven 1400 years ago. So I hope this is helpful. It's just a, a short summary of uh, this trial that I found. Uh, and we're happy you know, to take questions and, uh, 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 and more information about this. And the other thing I think I would like to talk to you about, um, if we have time, is about the coronavirus situation. And uh, we have the uh, uh, governor you know, allow some businesses to open. And we, tomorrow, we'll have the restaurants and the dine-in uh, services to start. Uh, we're still in the hospital, we have restrictions, we're back to do some elective surgeries, but all these patients, they come by themselves and they have to test negative. So we are still in crisis. This is why I would like to stress, we are still in crisis. And what is interesting about Arizona, when we stopped you know, praying in the mosque, we have around probably 2000 less cases. Our cases are still increasing. We have over 11,000 cases as of today. So my, my sincere advice is we still should follow the restrictions. And uh, this is a scary situation. There are some reports from New York about kids getting effects of coronavirus even after weeks of coronavirus exposure. So my sincere advice, and I think I appreciate Imam Didmar and the other mosques that they decided not to open the mosque at this point. I think that's a very wise decision. And it's mainly because the numbers are still increasing. Arizona, one of the states that the numbers are increasing, unfortunately. I hope in two weeks, and I think uh, that's a smart move, and hopefully, I mean, for us, uh, eight time, inshallah, that we can still at least ease us, uh, ease, ease a little bit and, and be careful. I think my advice is for this time is, uh, hopefully the coronavirus will, will decrease. I don't think it's gonna go away. And it's gonna become a chronic disease, but we have to learn from it how to, uh, subhanallah be more like careful from dealing with uh, other people keep our distance uh, uh, keep our kids from uh, you know indoor play areas when there is a sick like a, a sick season like a flu season 
um, make sure you know washing hands and alhamdulillah we do wudu five times so that's enough uh, inshallah to kill any any germs and uh, uh, we all learn from you know uh, as muslims uh, about the cleanliness and you know uh, uh, all of that i was uh, reading uh, or hearing uh, um, one of the scholars back home he was talking about the history of the uh, ta'un uh, uh, like a pandemic ta'uns, uh, like ta'un amwas and other ta'uns that it happens in the Islamic uh, history. And uh, I'm sure Imam Didmar will correct me if I'm wrong. So he mentioned that this happened multiple times and subhanAllah, the, the length of any ta'un is usually three to five months as a maximum from our history. So hopefully the max is five months, then our body will develop some antibodies to ease up the infection, hopefully. So the human body can accommodate with multiple viruses and infections. And I'm hopeful that all of us will start to develop some forms of antibody. It's a matter we are, we should be patient. We should not go to, uh, we should not take our kids to grocery stores. I think we still, uh, we still should be very careful. I think it's still the time that in Arizona, the cases are increasing. We should be more careful. I think we've not been eating outside for the last six, eight weeks. It's okay for two, three additional weeks. And, uh, you know, the good thing, there are no schools. And I think that is also a smart move. Um, that's all. This is my opinion. You know, we respect everyone's opinion in this, but uh, we should be careful. And my advice to my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, sabr, sabr for another uh, couple couple weeks. Uh, hopefully things will, will, will have a better a view of what's happening with the coronavirus situation. Jazakallah here, Dr. Salha. This is amazing information. Very, very good. I actually would be interested. I don't know if this is a, a study that could actually be read online, if it's been posted online, if you might be able to send the link to me, if the community Absolutely. has interest, I could, I could post it for them. Um, I, I enjoy reading things like that. So Absolutely. especially where this has the connection Alhamdulillah to Islam. Uh, it's very beautiful. Very, very good to have that insight. Um, let's see if we have any questions. Uh, Brother Muhammad, do we have anything on Zoom? Uh, Jazakumullah khair. I don't see any question on Zoom as of now. And do we have anything on Facebook? Uh, no, as, as of now, no, no questions. Okay. Well, I actually came up with two questions then. So, uh, if you don't mind, please. Uh, so, physiologically speaking, if if we overeat at iftar, uh, does that erase any of the benefits that possibly we gained while we were fasting? Okay. So I I do not think so. But the problem with overeating or we eat too much, you know, most of that blood is gonna go. Uh, to the stomach to try to digest what we eat. So that's why you feel a little bit uh, like a drowsy or tired. This is subhanAllah what the Imam said yesterday. If we eat too much, we do not have good taraweeh. Uh, so I do not think it is connected much to the fasting because uh, we have to eat during, uh, you know, after Maghrib till Fajr. We have to rebuild our bodies, especially with hydration and food. But I do not think the overeating will decrease the benefits of fasting. Okay, just make us tired. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, another another question that I had um, is so so you would say that during fasting the body becomes stronger. Would you say that? Yes. So the, the cells got regeneration. That doesn't mean that you know. I think we all feel uh, weak, tired, dehydrated. But this is part of it. But I think the cells, you know, the older cells will will die. Then that will allow younger cells to generate and build a new immune system in a way. Instead of uh, uh, think about it, that it's like uh, you have less people to fight, but what what should you do so you get more people to fight in the army so the body will regenerate more cells so it's, it will become stronger uh yes we feel you know uh weak or uh, dehydrated but you know once we eat we have that strength right away subhanallah uh, so yes in general the our immune system should get stronger during fasting 
and uh, the, the way actually it was tested actually fasting the whole month so uh, because to generate cells you do not need only 24 hours so that is an ongoing process subhanallah i mean we don't know what's the hikmah behind you know fasting a whole month why it's not two months or why it's not 14 days uh, i'm not sure about that but subhanallah this is like 30 days and this is the benefits of it. So I think it's an accumulated benefit. It's not like fasting a day or two. I'm sure there is benefits of fasting here and there, but when you fast the consecutive days, as it's in the trial, like 30 days back to back, this is where you get the maximum benefit. Alhamdulillah. And you answered the second part of my question was, so if it does make the body stronger, does it actually boost the immune system? And you answered that. So that, that actually uh, possibly alleviates some of the, uh, maybe some of the anxieties that some of our brothers and sisters might have in regards to fasting during the coronavirus, that that the fasting actually strengthens the body and builds the immune system, strengthens the immune system. So, uh, alhamdulillah, Allah alhamdulillah. knows best, but it's, it's, it's a good time to fast. <laughs> Absolutely. SubhanAllah, it's a good timing. And hopefully by the eight time, it's going to be also a good time too. MashaAllah. Well, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you so much for uh, interviewing Dr. Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad, thank you so much for the beautiful advice and the information that you shared with the community. That's amazing. Inshallah, we'll share it with everybody. Um, I just had a quick question. When it comes to bloating, um, it happens in Ramadan to a lot of people. Um, can you maybe uh, give us an advice of what to do in order to stay away from bloating that's one and the other thing that i wanted to mention is uh, you know during uh, about two hours before eating iftar or at night when i do some you know when i do walking at night subhanallah i can uh, you know i do feel that energy i do feel like it's a strange uh, kind of power that comes to you and maybe that's I'm, I'm just assuming, and probably it's a question, is that like kind of a part of that uh, uh, rejuvenation or uh, how do you call it in uh, medical terms? No, I hear you. You mean like you get stronger. I think that part of it that uh, most of our blood will go to the stomach, the intestine area when we eat. So you'll feel that tired and sleepiness. <laughs> But two hours after you eat, you'll have that blood goes back more to the brain and other organs. So you'll feel you have a little bit more energy. I think that's like what's the physiology behind it. Uh, uh, but uh, the other question, the bloating, I think that's also by when we break the fast with uh, dates, tamr, uh, that will actually ease the, the stomach and the intestine because they were contracted. So when we have those like uh, to, to eat slowly and eat dates, subhanAllah, it will make our uh, digestive system to start working. And it also has to do with uh, the amount of food that, what, that what we eat. Uh, so the bloating is just because all the digestive system is, is all contracted means there was no food in it. And when you uh, start putting food in it, it's just going to take some time. It's a lazy system, but it takes some time to, to, to work again. Especially the fasting now is at least 14 hours, so it's a long time. Uh, and it's also, the bloating is connected to the food, honestly, that you eat. So the key is get some dates, you know, get some, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, yogurt. Those things kind of make your, your digestive system ready for the food. And this is also one of the advices that if you can get some dates, some yogurt or some soup, then try to do maghrib prayers, then you go back to your food. Uh, it's just a matter to allow the digestive system time to work. Uh, but I hope I answered your uh, questions. Uh, yeah, now. thank you so much. And you know, that is, as a matter of fact, that is the sunnah, to eat some dates and something very small and then do the prayer. And then after that, you can eat a normal meal. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Barakallahu feek. Uh, brother, brother, brother Hamza, we got a question from Facebook. Okay. okay uh, this brother wants to know what's the required age for kids to fast, to start fasting? So I leave it for Imam Didmar. <laughs> I mean, I think that the, from my end, the, uh, uh, the simple answer would be when they really can fast without danger to their health, right? Um, 
I mean, Salah, like, uh, you know, علموهم السابعة وضربهم عليها بالعاشرة. But I'm not sure if there is a specific age or the puberty age for fasting. But I think um, uh, if the kids should not like fast the whole day just out of a sudden, they should be trained to fast slowly, you know, three, four hours, then six hours, probably eight hours, then 10 hours, just in general. Uh, from their health perspective and their mentality. But honestly, what is the age? I am not sure. I do not know. You said it correct, Dr. Muhammad. After the age of puberty, they uh, they become responsible. But yeah, before the age of puberty, they should be trained and fast some hours during the day. Um, and yeah, even if they hit the age of puberty and they're not uh, capable of fasting, they're not responsible for that either. I have a couple questions on Zoom too, um, if we have time. Uh, how much water do we need to drink during the night? Sure. Um, so uh, I can see here like 16 Oz is 500 ml. I mean, in general, um, we, we, we say 30 ml per kilogram. And I know this is kind of different. We go with pounds here. So roughly speaking, I'm going to say two to three liters. Uh, at least two liters of water, uh, but also remember that we drink some juice, we drink some other things uh, uh, that it has some water, like some fruits, these things has water, but at least two liters uh, to prevent dehydration and to prevent like kidney stones and other things. And depends, you know, smaller people and larger people, it really goes by the weight in general, but I would say at least uh, two liters uh, uh, of water. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, do we need to avoid any specific food between Maghrib and Fajr? Um, I mean, in general, from like a personal experience and in general, uh, uh, the spicy food does not sit well with Ramadan. This is my, my impression. I think it makes you more thirsty and uh, you can get a lot of cramps. And this is honestly a case with more of a spicy food. But some people has different tolerance to that. Uh, and I feel the greasy, uh, 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 greasy uh, fried food is not a, a well set uh, for Ramadan. Uh, those are like uh, more of the food that could affect the digestive system in a way that makes a lot of cramps and also keep you more thirsty. So probably try to avoid them during the Ramadan time. Barakallah um, Can someone recently recovered from the COVID fast? Sure. So um, that's a very good question. Actually, I, I get asked also patients uh, who are on chemotherapy when we can restart their chemotherapy or their treatments. So there is no specific answer. But even us as a healthcare providers, they tell us if you get COVID uh, three days without symptoms, then get back to work. But what I would say is probably a week uh, from the last symptom. Uh, uh, one week from the last fever, from the last cough, from, th from the last sneeze. If you are feeling well, strong enough, probably go ahead and fast. There are some, some physicians says one to two weeks. Uh, uh, and this is on, on, the, on the medicine part. I try to use the two weeks just to be safer. Uh, but I think uh, uh, you, uh, as a patient, you'll know your body and how strong you are but probably wait at least a week from the last symptom to try uh, to fast. Jazakumullah khair. I have one last question and we wrap it up, inshallah. Uh, people who are exposed to COVID patients uh, but not feeling any symptoms, should they fast? Uh, I think all the uh, uh, COVID situation goes by symptoms. Uh, because uh, we might be carriers to multiple diseases and we do not feel them. So if you are a carrier for a disease, but you're not suffering from the disease, I'm not sure if there is a rukhsa for, for, for iftar, but the other part of it is your health is going to be deteriorated if you fast. Uh, I mean, the answer of this is, is hard to say because we do not know much about the COVID uh, uh, situation yet. But I would say if you, have a, if, you, if you are with COVID-19 patients, you started to have symptoms, you should probably break your fast, make sure you're feeling okay, then probably fast back again if things are okay. But if you are asymptomatic, you feel okay, just, uh, you know, uh, I think keep going with your fast. 
we started to test our antibodies these days. Uh, I, I personally have my blood drawn last week, so I'm still waiting on the results to make sure if we have any immunity uh, for the COVID-19 from just exposure. I never have symptoms. So there are some tools now to know if, especially in the healthcare uh, uh, worker, if you got exposed or not. But I think as long as you're asymptomatic, you feel well, just the general idea, probably fast. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, the mic is yours, Brother Hamza. Right. I want to thank everybody in the community for uh, tuning in tonight and uh, hearing Dr. Salhab. And uh, Doctor, I thank you so much for coming on. Jazakallah khair. Uh, and uh, salamu alaikum. Alaikum as-salam. Jazakumullah khair. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>